So I begin by creating a, a default torus, select the entire object and rotate it round along the x-axis 90 degrees. I hold the shift key down to get it in discrete steps. Now I'll move it up along the y-axis a couple of steps again holding the shift key down. Press space to deselect, go to the edge tool and select a couple of these edges that as you can see are about 90 degrees from the centre. Press L for loop, right click and loop cut. Using the geometry graph I'm going to hide the bit that's the larger section and then right click and then right click on rotate so I can select this end face and it'll give me a normal to rotate this section around so right click and uh, then I'll hold the shift key down and it'll rotate it around in steps till I've got it 180 degrees rotated it has to be exact because when I bring this other bit back and select it and right click and weld it those will only weld if they're close enough that uh, end face is a close enough match at this point press space to deselect and select this face and scale uniform 400% and then I'm going to bring it down uh, to meet up with this section here but before I do that I'm going to just enlarge this face I'm going to enlarge it scale uniform 300% and then I'll enlarge this loop uh, scale uniform just, just to swell it out I don't know 200% will do I'll take this one loop and scale it scale uniform let's see just just a bit try and create a nice smooth transition there and then I'll get this and move it down an arbitrary amount but just so that it's just behind this face it just makes it easier to select the face that's right we need to work out a way of getting this through the side of this object so I'm going to use the edge selection G C and then this I'm going to slide with the slide command up so I give myself some space above there so that's about the same distance there it is from that edge to there press space to deselect select an edge press G press C and slide that down in the opposite direction I need one more so press G press C space to deselect everything and then I want to select one two three four faces there one in the middle one on the outside right click intrude and I want to intrude a small amount so I hit tab and go 0.02 to control the amount of intrusion so you can see where we are now so this hole needs filling in I'm going to do that by selecting this edge here press L for loop and then select the slide command again and slide it down towards this other edge so it's about equally as thick as the thickness of those walls press A to bring the focus in and now I've got eight faces eight narrow faces and eight narrow faces around the outside to bridge to speed the process up what you can do if you can uh, get hold of these is I'll use the G command on these little edges so that they're selected all the way around and then I'll deselect a couple facing each other and then delete the remainder which will create some funny geometry that I'll now get rid of by bridging so I can bridge that one to the one on the other side oops and bridge and then bridge this one oops it's hard to get hold of these narrow faces that's the only thing and bridge that together like that that means there's only going to be a seam there and a seam there in the middle which I can use the weld option here to weld them together so you can see those have been fixed before moving on to the base I'm going to use the loop command to select the inner and outer loops there. I've hit the wireframe view I can see where they're both selected and just bevel them out slightly. So by adding that geometry it'll mean that there's a when it's smoothed down this shape it'll be a tighter connection just there. Turn the wireframe view off. Now you can see that's dipped in a bit so I can sort of correct this by moving it along the x-axis just to tidy it up and if I'm careful select the points and rotate them along the z-axis just a little bit to straighten the sides up so I'm just looking to, to avoid any awkward geometries when on these four-sided four faces where two sides are, are a long way in two sides out it seems to break things so I'm just tidying that up a bit with another move on the x-axis so I've got to be careful because the corresponding problems could be occurring on the inside so just to join these this this area to fill this area in I select the inner and outer edges press L for loop I'll move my view around so you can see by moving along the y-axis I can create it so that these faces 
are now in a position to be bridged together. I could do the same trick as I did last time and uh, delete some of the edges or I could show you the laborious way which is probably easier here because the geometry can get a bit weird if you start deleting large portions across the base it's just selecting these edges is fiddly All right, I just move my view around so it's this to that one bridge we're not far there just got to bear in mind that we're only managing to bridge these end bits so you do need to weld the faces that are appearing at the side this face here for example when this other bit is bridged in there'll be another face opposite that's identical that the weld command can pick up and that will allow us to get rid of any awkward seams that might split open when you smooth it so that's the process select the entire object weld you should see these points lighting up to indicate the weld's been successful and then we can switch to uh, the wireframe view so you can see what's happening inside select the entire object and hit smooth a couple of times to uh, smooth the shape off I'll just use the A key to refocus press space to deselect so you can see now we've got our entry point that goes in around and then flows around the outside as it should and there doesn't look to be any weird geometry at this join which looks nice and sharp so that should be uh, that should be good for rendering and uh, I think that's the end of the video so hope you found that interesting and uh, that's just one of the many ways you could use Wings 3D to create one of these I think they're called Klein bottles I think they're pronounced that way anyway so there you go that's the end of the video